do you have any party coming up are you thinking of making some party jollof and chicken do you want to make some light soup pizza and some pufu pizza today we're going to go and do party party time so you first need your tomatoes you need your tomatoes this is like averagely the bowl of tomato over here this is how they sell it so you need to first wash your tomatoes and then you de-seed the tomato because all the seeds can be very acidic and they will not make your jollof taste very nice so you move the seeds you can cut and then use them directly or you can blend and then put them over fire to get them as dried as possible when you pre-cook your tomatoes what it does is that the water in there is reduced so when you're doing the gravy it saves you more time and it doesn't spill all over the place even hurt your skin so you can do the same for your onion and for your pepper your ginger garlic and all those things you'll be using for your jollof then we're also going to blend some fresh onion which we are going to use in seasoning our chicken so to kick start with the jollof base we're going to do gravy so you'd have your oil which you're going to heat up we add in our garlic the garlic goes in first and then you're going to mix it in the oil as it's heating up then we add in our tomato paste which we like to call it in tomato here <laughs> so over here we used about um, five tablespoons of the garlic then we used the tomato paste we used um 2.1 plus 1.1 that's like 3.3 kilograms of the tomato paste because we're doing jollof for 100 people then this is onion so this is onion which has been cooked so you just blend the onion and put it on fire for it to cook we're using half of it when you buy the onion when you count they usually sell a quarter which is 25 and then they have half which is um, 50 pieces so there's about 40 pieces of onion which has been blended and then place on fire for all the water to go out of it so we're going to add half of it to it if we need to add more we'll be adding with time because if there's too much onion in there it's going to be overly sweet as well which you don't want to happen in your jollof there should be balance in there then you add the pepper to your taste the quantity you'd want which is also like blended pepper put on fire and then allow to cook the main reason why everything you're seeing has been pre-cooked is to save you time and to avoid you having overly moisturized gravy or gravy which is very wet because if your gravy is very wet when you're doing jollof the taste is not so thick or so um, strong in there and then when they are all fresh and you've not cooked it what happens is when you're doing the gravy it will be doing to <laughs> it will be just like boiling and the bubbles and all those things can hurt you you know so sometimes when you're doing large stock gravies it's always good you pre-cook the individual ingredients to reduce the moisture content in there so once that is on fire we're going to be working on the chicken so your chicken this one we bought the drumsticks because drumsticks you take one or two you you just put it on your food and you are done so the drumsticks was what we used in here. So these days, when you are catering for large numbers, instead of going to buy the tie that you're now coming to cut, cut and share, you can just buy the drumstick and go your way. And you know, some of the ties, some of them are so slim, when you cut, you don't even know how to cut. But let's cut it into two or into three. To save yourself the stress and get even sizes, you can just go with the drumsticks. Now you need to break the leg of the drumstick, the lower part of it, else you cook the drumstick and the meat will separate from the leg and it's going to look funny so even at home when you're doing your chicken when you buy it it's always good to let them break the leg for you so that when you cook it it puts it pulls together beautiful and more presentably then you wash your chicken once or twice to get it neat then you put it in the basket to strain the water from it we don't want the water in there then I'm going to, we're going to do the seasoning mix. So for the seasoning mix, we have garlic, then we add in ginger, then we add in pepper, then we add in the onion we've blended. And of course, we go in with your 
seasoning, your curry powder. We used um, Gino curry powder because Gino curry powder has turmeric with all the local spices in there. Then there's also adobe complete, which is also some look um, dry seasoning, which goes in there. You can add the bouillon cubes if you'd want to, like the Maggi cubes, maybe like four or five if you'd want to, and then your salt. So when you're done, you mix all of them together beautifully, and then you toss it over your chicken, and then they go into your bucket or your rubber, and you freeze or you refrigerate it for you to work with it later. So it's good you marinate this the night before you work on the chicken, or if you're going to do it that day, you can do it in the morning, let it sit for like an hour or two before you work it. And for our light soup, this is one trick to do when you are doing large soups for people. You always need to wash your garden eggs, cut it into two, then you put it in your saucepan, arrange it beautifully. Then your onion also goes in there. You wash and cut beautifully into it. Then you wash your tomatoes, pepper, ginger, garlic, your turkey berries, they all go in there. And then you pre-cook this thing. So put water on it, put it on fire, let it cook and let it cool down. And you're virtually done with the light soup base for your soup. So this is one trick to go about. It's when you are doing large soups. So the next day we, we did the chicken seasoning the night before and in the morning at dawn, we worked on the chicken. So you need to start with your hot water with a bit of salt in there. Then when the hot water is boiling, then you put in the chicken into it, into the sauce. And you're going to just cook this till it is done. Yeah, I'm using the hot water to help it so that you don't overly cook the chicken. Because if you're going to fry chicken in numbers, and if you don't take care, you may have overly soft chicken or chicken which is looking like cooked on the outside, but the bones will be bloody. And around our place, in our part of Africa, where we like to chew our bones of the chicken, if it's bloody, so you need to be very mindful of it. So as that is ongoing, we're also doing the soup alongside for the fufu. So we kick-started it with the beef and onion at the base, and then we pour the juice from the boiled vegetables. Then I blended those as well. But I can see the chicken is working perfectly alongside so you just blend all the vegetables together smoothly and then you know this is ready for your soup base and you see the chicken once it's cooked you realize that they are all whole and together if you don't break the leg chicken no we'll say and i'm just insane baby need the answer insane baby and they don't look so presentable so this is how to work it and the same stock we're just going to add the second batch which was in the polythene into it and it works perfectly so for your soup because you don't want so much chaff in there you can see it like we are doing here and of course adding more water because it is light soup so you're going to add in more water to it to also give you the volume you'd want to get with your soup so as we're doing the jollof we are doing the light soup by the side nina baby boom so you're just going to cook the second batch of chicken to till it is done and we take it off the stock the stock we're going to pour it out and use in the jollof recipe so it's not going to go waste you can use even this for your chicken stews and for most of your soups as well as a base in there so you're going to have your strain now basket in the to drain off the excess stock it's good to have them dry enough if you don't do that you're going to finish and then the chicken will be sticking sticking together and it will tear up and all those things it's always good you drain it properly before you fry it so we're going to pour enough oil into our fine bowl or frying pan for the frying of the chicken. And as that is heating up, we're going to have um, our sardines mashed and our beef pate ready. These are going to go into the jollof to give it more taste and more flavor in there. 
So when you're doing commercial jollof, buy some two or three sardines and beef pate to improve the richness of the jollof. It shouldn't be like a yase, yase jollof. It should be classy jollof. So the rest of the stock, a bit of the stock with the gravy we've already done. You realize the gravy we did, we didn't add any salt, any spices to it. It was very deliberate. So when we are doing the jello, that's where we're going to add all of them to it. So you can add your gravy base. We used a very big cup of it into it. Then we added the stock to it. And of course, water went in there as well. And around that time, we're still frying the chicken. So once the oil heats up, you put your chicken in there. You stir it to make sure that the chicken is well spread in the oil. And of course, once that goes in beautifully, you add flour into the oil. Because this is quite an amber, you can't dust it in flour before you put it in the oil. It's going to waste your time. If you put the flour in the oil before you fry, that one too gives you a different feel. But that one is not really guy. So if you want very impressive chicken, it's always good to put the chicken into the hot oil. Then you sprinkle the flour into the oil. The chicken will pick up the flour and then they'll look more nicer when they are ready. You'd have a look at it when we get to that point. So this is when we add in our spices. So we add in the curry and then we add in the salt as well as any seasoning you want to add to it. Whether you want to use the bouillon seasoning cubes or not. And as the chicken is fine, you need to be turning it to make sure that each part of it cooks beautifully. Then we add in the sardine and the beef patties, which I said is going to just improve the taste of your jollof. And you add in enough water to get you a good base. And your salt is very essential. So you need to add in your salt as well. And you'll be just turning your chicken alongside, making sure the chicken is also coming together beautifully at the side. We're going to continue by adding in uh, dark soya sauce. So dark soya sauce um, adds a bit of taste to it. And most importantly, it improves the color of your jollof. Because these days, the tomatoes and all those things, even when they are fresh, they look red on the outside. The inside is not red. So you finish and your jollof will look a bit pale. So you add a bit of the dark soya sauce to it to improve the color of the jollof. And then... We're going to check on our soup. You realize that our soup too is boiling beautifully in the corner. It's always good to pour out your rice and be sure before you go and mess it up. And sometimes if the rice is having a lot of dust and grains like insects, you can try to wash it before you put it in. And you realize our chicken is looking so, 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 so beautiful. You see how it is looking. You won't get it like this if you don't follow the same procedure. So for this one, we used um, 5 kg bag, one and a half. So that is about 7.5 kg of rice per each of the bowls you are seeing over there. Around this time, we realized the chicken was done. And look at how beautiful it is looking. You won't get the same result if you don't follow the same procedure. So whenever you have party jollof and chicken to do, make sure that you go as we did over here. That is where you get the best results. So your chicken goes into the hot oil, then you add in your flour to it. So you add in your rice in here. And then at this point, once the rice go in, you are going to be stirring and stirring and stirring till all the water goes into the rice. So the, the rice absorbs all the water and they form into one perfect, beautiful look. This is how to go about party jollofs because they are quite a number. If you don't take care, you can have very funny results. So it's always good to stare, 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 till the rice absorbs all the water. Then you can cover it up and then allow it to take form with the heat in there. If you don't do this and if you don't stare properly, I say about shinte, na emonem be ye, na ibiya kwa ye ye omose. So to avoid that, you need to stir, 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 stir. So they form beautifully together. Then you can cover it up. So because this is large and they don't come with lids, usually we put a bit of 
rubber, which is one of the best, but you just do to retain the heat. And then you wet your isamtam or your cloth and you put it over it to retain the heat in there. You realize our soup has also cooked beautifully and gone down. We wash our smoked fish and you put it in. If you want to use any other fish, you can just do. If you want to use chicken, you have to pre-season before it goes in there. If you want to use meat, you have to pre-season before it goes in there. So you wash and put them in. If you have kako, you can also wash and put it in there. Then after a while, about 10, 15 minutes, you can go to your jollof and you can stir it up again. Jollof is all about stirring. If you don't stir it up to get the heat well balanced in there, you are not going to get good results. And when you realize that the jollof, the salt is not enough, you'd have to add a bit of water and salt to get salt solution and sprinkle it into the jollof and mix it up. So it's good when you do your first stir, after you take off the, the rubber and then the cloth, it's always good to taste for the salt. If the salt is not enough, then you add in your salt solution. And as that is ongoing, around this point today, we are virtually finishing you now, so you can start working on uh, fufu. If you want to peel the cassava and remove the inner thread and also cut it into smaller shapes and sizes, and then you'd also want to work on the plantain, remove the skin and then cut it into chunks you can cook. There's unripe plantain and grown cassava. So that's what we're going to use for the fufu. And once we are done with that, you'd obviously have to wash and arrange it properly in your bowl. So usually you just separate the plantain and the cassava to be able to really wash the cassava very well. Then you arrange it in your saucepan for cooking. On this channel, I have, um, I have a video on how to pound fufu and get it good results. Yes, so you can check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description button. And at our end, we tend to cook our cassava with a bit of salt. So that as we are cooking, as we are pounding the fufu, we can also be chewing a bit of it as we are working. So we tend to add a bit of salt to it. And also add out the, the flavor of it and preserves the fufu for longer. And the live soup was still on fire preparing for the fufu to meet, you know, sideways. And you can add some fried fish to it. Any fish you'd want to go in there, it can go in as well. And like I was saying, when you're covering up this kind of cooking, um, aluminum cooking bowls, you'd always need to use your wet cloth so that the heat would um, maintain in there. If you use dry cloth, the cloth will be somewhere, the heat will be going somewhere, which you would not like. And then you'd have to be staring once in a while. So like I always say, when you do the first day, you need to check for the salt. If it's not enough, you do a brine solution. So salt and water, then you sprinkle it on the rice, then you mix it up and then cover it for the heat to continue cooking it up in there. And that is pretty much how your party jollof and chicken should go. This is very simple, very easy. And by the time you take it off again, it is done. Very simple, for full, full, no stress, no pressure. So yes, when you are done, you can just have a big tray and scoop it all in because you're going to dish it and you may want it to cool properly before you start dishing. If it doesn't cool before you dish, that is when the heat will be on the, the chicken and all those things. And within hours, it may start getting you know, slimy. So you may want it to cool down a little bit. Then you can dish it into whatever you want to dish it into. So we did it in the takeaway packs with your chicken. It went into your rubber neatly and nicely. Add your water, add your drink, and Charlie, you are ready to serve your party jollof and chicken. The fufu was also pounded and enjoyed with the light soup. So if you have any party coming up or any program coming up, this is one sure way to go. So I'll leave the quantities in the description button below. 
do live life to the fullest be joyous be merry and support us with your views watch like subscription and sharing Mwah. Thank you.